Uh, you were talking a little bit about Tony Pompeo, and in 1951, you came to Watkins Glen to drive another car of Tony Pompeo. Uh, previously, when uh, I was talking to Pompeo, he offered me this new Ciada that he was figuring on bringing in to the country, and the owners of Ciada. Uh, Mr. Giorgio Ambrosini uh, and his son Renato Ambrosini were invited to come over to see the car perform, which was a car that Renato himself had driven, and they used it as a prototype. Well, Tony asked me if I would like to drive it, so I said certainly, and that car was modified after it got here with a Crosley engine in it instead of the Fiat engine that he used to use. But at the time, I did meet both Mr. Ambrosini and Renato Ambrosini. Renato uh, was not very good in English, but he did speak German, which I spoke. So we had a pretty good understanding. Uh, I raced that car for Toran. And in the last, very last lap, uh, I had a big, big problem with the uh, second class H driver who I was about to pass and lap for the second time. So I was actually two laps ahead of him. So going up and it was a slight increase and I was much quicker as he in his Crosley. So he moved over to the right and he moved on, moved me with his hand to pass him. And when I was about alongside of him, he pulled right to the left in front of me and pushed me right into the ditch, which unfortunately I didn't complete the race. But uh, both Ambrosinis were impressed by the car in Class H at the time and decided to build cars, which they finally did, and Tony used to sell them. But uh, I liked the car so much that I was able to buy it from Tony without an engine uh, after we, we both had the car at uh, Elkhart Lake in Wisconsin. And it finally worked out that I could buy it from him. And I, at the time, was selling Crosley, so I had engines available, and I modified one engine uh, by just keeping it the same displacement, but changing uh, the manifold and, and the input, the, uh, the valves, I put bigger valves in, so on. It was a good performing car, and finally lasted me for a couple of years when Tony showed me a picture of another Seattle going to be available. And I was tremendously impressed with just a picture that I decided I wanted to buy one of those as my next racing car. But between that time and the end of the year, uh, I raced the car. Actually, the, the following spring, I raced the car at Sebring, and that was my last race in the car. So getting into 1952, I was able to buy the car from, from Seattle for my next car. That is now 1952. Although I, I still owned the little Seattle with the Crosley engine, I was going to race both of them at the 1952 
Glenn race. But I didn't get to race the little one, but I did get to race the, actually I, I get, got to start the race in 1952 with the Seattle, with the coupe, and unfortunately that was the race with the accident, so I didn't get any full racing done in there.